Okay, real quickly, I want to do an alignment on the tailstock. And uh, the first thing that I want to do is check to make sure that the tailstock ways are parallel to the Z axis ways. So you can see I got my indicator set up, and that's going to be the first check that we're going to make. Okay, you probably won't be able to see the indicator dial, but uh, this is just sweeping along the, the V way on the tailstock. So I'm just moving the Z axis and checking that the, the V-way is parallel. Yeah, and it looks like it's perfect. Okay, this is a test piece. All this is, is I believe it's inch and a half diameter TGP. It's probably 1045 grade. Uh, but it doesn't have to be anything fancy. All it needs to be is something sort of close to round and sort of close to straight. And I just center drilled one end on the engine lathe, set it up in the machine. All we're going to do is take a light cut on the tailstock end, and then we'll back off, move down to the headstock end, come back to the same X position, and take a light cut at the headstock end. And when we measure the difference in the diameters, that should tell us the alignment of the tailstock. So it's basically a two-collar test, but I'm not going to go to all the work to actually prep a two-collar bar. You don't need to dick around with all that. Just take a, take a cut on each end and uh, compare the measurements. That's it. So let's see what happens here. RPM. Looks pretty good. Okay, now I'll take a measurement. Uh, I have a hunch that's going to be pretty far off though because I ran the tool back down to the same X position at the headstock end and it didn't even touch. So I actually had to run 15,000 smaller in order to get the tool to actually cut. So I'll take a measurement and see, see what we get. Okay, so uh, the adjustment on this machine is a little strange. Maybe other machines are built this way, I don't know. But <clears throat> what it appears that Romy has done is they actually ground the outside of the quill and the taper socket of the quill eccentrically and basically if you rotate the barrel of the quill it moves the center line of the Morse taper so I think based on my test results that I need to move it about six thousandths. And uh, yeah, it's actually pretty substantial the amount of adjustment that you get. So let's see, I need to go away. Okay. So there's six thousandths right there. And I'll set up and take another test cut and we'll just see what happens. 
Uh, now, ass assumedly, the the center has also moved up and down. You know, its height has been adjusted also. You know, if you have something something on an eccentric like that, you're going to have horizontal and vertical movement. But unless we're cutting, you know, very small diameters, normally the height of the center has a pretty small influence. So I'm going to lock it back down, move the tailstock back into position, take another test cut, and we'll see we'll see what happens. Okay, let's uh, let's try that again. <clears throat> Rookie mistake went the wrong way and uh, let me just go on a little rant here this is an inner rapid half dial indicator I'm sure I paid a king's ransom for it you know they're real proud of these things and it's super accurate makes great measurements but uh, there's a little problem with it so when the needles pushed away from the face the hand counts up. When the needle is pushed towards the face, the hand counts backward. So, you got to keep that in mind. Now, I'm too dumb to remember that all the time. So, that's why I bought a Mitotoyo test indicator. And it doesn't have that problem. It counts up no matter which way you move the needle so or the stylus so anyway I think that one's going on eBay let's move this thing the right way okay that seems to be about all she's got, so let's hope it's enough. Okay, so if you've gotten this far in this video series, I think you should have expected that just, you know, rotating that barrel of the quill, yeah, that wasn't going to be enough to do what we needed to do. That's just way, way too easy. So, <clears throat> I rotated the quill to its maximum adjustment, took a test cut, and it was still about uh, I'd say about about three thousandths off so what I did is I rotated the quill back to the middle of its travel and I measured with an indicator while I was doing that that moved the the <clears throat> center of the tailstock towards the back of the machine about eight thousandths so then I loosened these hold down screws here here and then there's, there's four in the back side of the of the ways and down here at the bottom of the frame you see this block right here and then there's a screw right here so the screw pulls the tailstock ways back towards the back of the machine this little block right here is kind of like a clamp and it pulls the tailstock out so i just set up an indicator on this end of the, of the ways and the far end of the ways pull them over ten thousandths so that gives me my eight thousandths back, plus two thousandths that I think I'm needing. Uh, then I set up my indicator up here, check the parallel to the Z. Everything was good, tightening everything back down. We're going to take another test cut, and then if there's any more fine adjustment that needs to be made, I can do it by rotating that quill assembly. So, yeah, that's the next step. All right, time for the final, final moment of truth here. <clears throat> Looks like I got one point six zero five. Yeah, I'll call it one point six zero six even. And I will call that 1.6061. So, I think we can certainly live with a tenth difference over, I don't know, 
12, 13 inches, something like that. So yeah, that's good enough. We're gonna we're gonna call this a completed project. All right, I'm not done complaining about this about this inner rapid indicator. So inner rapid on the left, Mitutoyo on the right. So watch what happens here when I pull the stylus towards the face. The uh, yeah, the big hand goes counterclockwise. And by the way, the little hand goes clockwise. And then when I push it the other way, the big hand goes clockwise, and the little hand goes counterclockwise. So I guess if you were working, you know, pushing away from the face, you know, everything would make sense. But when you're working on the backside, everything's backwards. Anyway. Yeah. Mitotoyo. Big hand goes positive, little hand goes positive, push it the other way, big hand goes positive, little hand goes positive. Yeah. The movement on this inner rapid is fantastic. Never seen one better. I'm sure it's accurate as hell, but that is super annoying. And, uh, you know, if you're the kind of person that's maybe used to using that, or you can remember that the needle is backwards, depending on which side you're working on, probably it's great. But uh, I'll take the Minotoyo. <clears throat> also, this inner rapid, I don't know what they were thinking. So, it does have a dovetail back here that you can use with your regular, you know, Noga holder. No problem. But then it has this stem. And everybody seems to love that stem. But I don't know why. I've never seen anything that it fits. And uh, I actually had to buy this little accessory. It's like a little collet. That you can slip over the stem. And then you can put it into your regular uh, Noga arm. Yeah. Mitotoyo. It's got the dovetails where you want them. So, yeah. I don't like this inner rep. I think it's going on eBay. And uh, I'll stick with the Mitotoyo. I've got a tenths reading version of this one too. It's just as good. And uh, they're actually cheaper too than the Inner Rapids. And yeah, don't buy an Inner Rapid. Okay, I think we're going to call this project complete. Everything's put back together. We've done the alignment of the turret. We've done the alignment of the spindle. We've done the alignment of the tailstock. And we've leveled the machine. That's everything that we need to do in order to, to get this machine back into tip-top condition uh, at this point it's ready to cut parts and I know that these videos have gone on and on and maybe they don't appeal to you know a huge audience but hopefully somebody is watching and uh, hopefully it's helpful and maybe the maybe there will be an opportunity in the future to make more videos so thanks for watching